Hi, everyone. I'm Lejeune Montgomery Tabron, President and CEO of the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. Today, I want to share a very important conversation about our new campaign of solidarity with Haiti called Pockets of Hope. Since 2011, the W.K. Kellogg Foundation has been supporting initiatives making an impact in Haiti, but the reality is that this is a country full of people who need our help now more than ever. Pockets of Hope is a collaborative effort by the W.K. Kellogg Foundation and partners to increase investment in game-changing, locally-led work that's already happening in education, health care, food production, and economic security for Haitian families and children. In the conversation you're about to see, I had the incredible opportunity to speak about Pockets of Hope with Michel Pierre Louis, a former Prime Minister of Haiti and the current President of the Foundation for Knowledge and Liberty in Port-au-Prince, and Garcelle Beauvais, a Haitian-born actress and humanitarian. I must say that I'm very honored to be invited to this conversation. Me too. And CEO of the W.K. Kellogg Foundation and Garcelle Beauvais, Actress of television, television personality, on behalf of Haiti's Pockets of Hope. My connection to Haiti is really my birthright. I was born in St. Mark, and I have an affinity for my people and my country. I've always been proud to say I'm Haitian, even sometimes when there were negative connotations that were connected to that. Um, I always say you can take the girl out of Haiti, but you can't take Haiti out of the girl. And so Haiti is close to my heart. Um, I teach my children about Haiti. Um, I have really great fond memories of being there and going to school and visiting my grandmother in St. Mark. I have a great connection and will always, always have. The W.K. Kellogg Foundation has funded projects in Haiti as early as the 1950s. And uh, while we had made many grants in Haiti prior to 2011, after the earthquake, we felt it even more important to focus on Haiti and name it one of our priority places, which means that we would establish local presence and commit ourselves to working in that area for at least a generation. We knew that that was important because as we could see all of the resources flowing into Haiti after the earthquake, we knew that the real catalyst for change would be a much more deeper commitment to Haiti and one where we wouldn't just arrive for a moment, but that we would be there for a generation. And we wanted to be a trusting partner in Haiti so that we could catalyze it and help other funders strategically collaborate in ways that would be the best for the children and families of Haiti. As a Haitian, I'm extremely moved by what uh, Jun just said such a commitment to Haiti and to Haiti's education, to Haiti's youth and children is extremely important. And what she said about after the earthquake is also important because Haiti is seen as a case of humanitarian aid. And what the W.K. Kellogg Foundation is doing goes way, goes way beyond being just a case of humanitarian aid. It is investment. It is long-term strategies, and we are extremely grateful to the W.K. Kellogg Foundation for their commitment. I would agree and say one of the things that I love what Kellogg Foundation is doing is the fact that it's not somebody coming in and giving a handout and being the hero. It's about making the Haitians their own hero, right? Making us the heroes by having us participate in our well-being. We know what we need. We know where there's lack. We know how to improve our own lives, and I love that they're putting it in our hands and letting the Haitian community
community, you know, figure it out for themselves as opposed to having somebody come in and again, like being the hero, let them be the hero of their own lives. We want to begin to be that bridge for other philanthropic organizations who want to join us. We know that the increased investment in these great pockets of hope will lead to systemic change in Haiti for all of its children and families. So we at the W.K. Kellogg Foundation wants to start this investment by its own contribution of $30 million over the next three years with the hope that it would be matched by $60 million during that same time period. So that collectively that's $90 million that would invest in the next generation of children and families in Haiti. I applaud that. Amazing. Amazing. What I hope it does and what it can do is not only unite us as a people, but to give us the opportunity to thrive. The Nobel Prize in Economy, uh, Esther Duflo, said when you work with poor communities, there are several, you know, principles, but there are two that are fundamental. It's long-term investment and proximity management strategies. And that's what the WK Kittle Foundation is about. You know, I think it, it really lies in the hands of the people. I think, you know, we are the ones that can change anything and everything. And so it's important not only for, obviously, to get the funding and the philanthropists to come aboard, but it's important for us to have, to feel like we have power to make the change. You know, sometimes you can't wait for the government. Sometimes you can't wait for the paperwork or the red tape. It's about doing little bits every day so that we can prosper and we can do better. At the W.K. Kellogg Foundation, we don't go into places with ideas. Uh, we hear from people who are there on the ground and we know their proximity uh, allows them to come up with the best solutions for how to address the issues that they have concerns about. Uh, I have so many examples, but one that is very near and dear to my heart is some of the investments we've made in some of the major hospitals in Haiti, specifically in Mirbalé, the university hospital, as well as uh, St. Boniface Hospital. These hospitals have a broad geographic area that they serve. And in fact, what we learned is that women who are expecting mothers cannot make it to the hospital if they wait until they go into labor because the roads are treacherous and the travel is long. And as we learned about uh, the struggles, and we know that's not quality health care when you're having your child on the road on the way to the hospital. We invested in a birthing center at these hospitals where the mother can arrive a month ahead of her due date, time in advance, so that they get the proper prenatal care and can deliver a healthy child uh, without the stress and trauma of not even knowing how you're going to make it to the hospital. The two hospitals that Lejeune mentioned, the Mir Ballet and the Fond des Blancs hospitals, are the most important hospitals and caregiver in Haiti. I don't have the exact figures, but it's close to millions of Haitians and women, children, that go to this two hospital per year. It's amazing the treatment that they get. But if I can say something about uh, example on my side, Focal, Focal is a Haitian foundation created 28 years ago that has been working since with, um, I would say, if I'm, I don't want to be too modest, with some degree of success. But Focal works with a network of smallholder farmers organizations 
throughout the country. And what we do at Focal is that we facilitate network building within those organizations, data collections, bridging with universities, because there is a lot to learn as, a, as we, you know, agriculture can no longer be done without scientific knowledge. And they were extremely interested in that. Our Food Systems Alliance is a great example of a partnership where we know Haiti has the land mass and the agricultural uh, capacity to grow its own food, yet most of its food is imported. So there is a body of work that is working with local smallholder farmers that activated during the pandemic to make sure that families and children were fed and had access to food. We supported over 40,000 smallholder farmers to come together to learn best agricultural practices that were about sustainable agriculture, but also that showed them how to market and distribute this food to places where it was needed throughout Haiti. And again, that's just an example of the power of the local people and the local networks. The capacity is there. They need the support and the connection so that the ecosystem can grow around access to quality food in Haiti. I think a role that philanthropy can play is to be the convener to bring people together across various sectors and disciplines to come together and learn together. We have uh, a way that we approach our work at the W.K. Kellogg Foundation. We say that it's co cooperative planning, intelligent study, and group action. That is so true. And I may add that this should happen also at the grassroots level bringing the communities together and build, build and, and, and commit together to systemic change. And I think if you have the foundation that we need in Haiti, the infrastructure to make everything thrive, then everybody else will do well and we won't need handouts and we won't need um, other people to come in because we can do that on our own. I think it's the independence of being able to take care of ourselves and our family and our community is what I think we're striving for. That's the purpose of Pockets of Hope. Uh, we know that there is great work going on in Haiti. What we need is scale. Uh, and, you know, scale is something that we can create when we partner, when we work together when the philanthropists come together and combine our resources in a way that uh, creates multiplier effects in the work that the local people are doing on the ground. While people hear the headlines of what's happening in Haiti, we don't talk enough about the great work and the, the way that they continue to recover and rebound and move forward. And that is why we're trying to make sure that this narrative is shared across the nation and the world. I couldn't agree more. Every time I go to Haiti and I post pictures, beautiful landscapes or the people or all of it, the music, the art, I always get in my comments, people say, thank you for showing the positive side of Haiti. We don't get to see that on the news. We only see when it's, when it's devastation. We only see when it's something dire. Thank you for showing something. And I think that's what we're trying to do with the Kellogg Foundation is to shift the narrative so that people see that there are good things happening in the midst of what else is happening. But let's focus on the positive, at least, please. Philanthropy, and particularly one as influent and committed to Haiti as the W.K. Kellogg Foundation can play a key role in helping Haitians change the narrative and drive new and positive messages about themselves. One of the things that's really important to me is the legacy that my mom left me and my sisters and brothers in terms of you give back, right? Um, when I look at 
the children in Haiti right now that are struggling or not being able to do the things that will make them thrive, I think about that could have been me. That could have been me and um, I'm trying not to get emotional. I had the opportunity to come to the United States and I don't take that lightly. And I think part of my drive in everything that I do is because I recognize the opportunity that I was given. I believe that the, the American of Haitian descent have the role to play. And uh, Garcel is there as a, as a witness of what she does personally, what her platform does, but also what other Haitian of uh, American, Americans of Haitian descent can do. And I know that the W.K. Kellogg Foundation is uh, extremely uh, aware of the importance of those Haitian communities, Haitian American communities, and of the role that they can play in not only providing financial support so that the, we can, as fast as possible, reach the 90 millions, but, <laughs> but at the same time, you know, participate you know, in, uh, in the efforts that are being done in Haiti to consolidate the communities, to accompany. They have vested interests sometimes in Haiti. I think it's important that we can open Haiti up to the world so other people can come and see how beautiful it is. We just need a little help. You gotta have hope. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way of life. You have to have hope. If you have no hope, then it's hopeless, right? Then there's nothing, there's no change. I think hope is aspiration of what's to come or what can come. And I think we have to be hopeful. I mean, I, being in my industry, if I didn't have hope, I wouldn't be where I am now. I think it's all about, you know, having resilience and wanting better, wanting better for my people, wanting better for our country, wanting better for, for Haiti. And I see Haiti can be just as fruitful as other places people go to either build homes, go on vacation, get married. Um, I want to see that. I want to see that in my lifetime. This roundtable gives real and grounded insights into what is going on in Haiti right now, who is on the ground doing impactful systems changing work, and how we can all help and support that work. I hope it inspires you to participate and invest in Haiti's journey, the transformation of the future of this beautiful place and its people. We cannot do this alone, so we are reaching out to you, asking for you to join us. You can visit HaitiPocketsOfHope.com to learn more. Thank you.